terrible. Not a word I really like to use when talking about Gunpla, and I really try to stay towards the kind of positive aspects when I'm actually talking about something, but this kit right here really does sum up all of the worst aspects when it comes to building a kit. Now, I will admit, that is mainly because it is an older kit. This is the 2004 high-grade Dreadnought Gundam from Gundam Seed, specifically Gundam Seed MSV, and it's from the manga Gundam Seed X Astrays. Now, without a single doubt, this is the worst high-grade I've ever actually built and reviewed, which is kind of funny. I wonder if it is the worst Gunpla I've ever built and reviewed? Well, definitely the reviewed part, because the worst Gundam I ever actually built is the Master Grade Victory Gundam. Now, I've never reviewed that. I probably should. It might be funny. But yeah, wow, this kit definitely woo! But anyway, that's enough babble, let's just get right on into it with the aesthetics. So jumping now into the aesthetics, and I'm going to try and start with the positive aspects about this before I actually jump into the more negative things about it. Overall, the general look is there. This is without a doubt the Dreadnought Gundam, which seems to be Seed's answer to the Gundam XX. Even though this does suffer from some old school, or should I say a lot of old school issues, the vast majority of the colors are here. You would get away with just detailing this up, and you'll still end up with a nice shelf-worthy kit. Definitely. The Dreadnought Gundam is a very cool design. It's based quite heavily on this here, the gates if I'm not mistaken, which means it does add some very unique kind of angles and design aspects into a Gundam that usually isn't there, especially down in the lower legs around all those different angular over the top curvy parts. So yeah, if you're going to say one good thing about the way this looks aesthetically is the overall feel, presence and silhouette of the Dreadnought Gundam is there. You just have to add a little bit more of your own effort into the mix to get that to pop. So definitely without a doubt a project Gunpla right here, not something to build out a box. So yeah, in a vacuum just standing up on your shelf right like this right here, it doesn't look too bad. Well that is until you pop the actual art side by side with it, and this is where you're starting to see that this is so not color accurate. Again, this is just a sign of the times that it was from. Definitely the worst defenders being the chest and the shoulders up there, which is meant to have some white segments. And speaking of the colors that it's meant to have, they all come on this absolute whopper of a sticker sheet. That is all white stickers. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. There's so so many these are for up on the shoulders. These are from the chest these little white ones here I'm not even sure what they're for the front the big ring segment which attaches onto the back There's meant to be white on these little stripes right here to break up that sea of red This is just literally cast entirely in red and speaking of that red right here It's not a nice red at all and some of the plastics in this kit actually do kind of suffer from that This is that really old-school kind of plastic. That's very shiny doesn't look very nice at all. It definitely feels quite strong, but you can almost see the light through it. It is that hollow and transparent. This goes for most of the plastics on it. The white isn't too bad, but the colors are extremely, extremely vivid and not necessarily in a good way. So any kind of details you really see on this kit right here are just kind of molded into the surface like we've got there. If you do panel line this, and I did panel line this, you will get some of the details coming out. Now I didn't panel line everything, and I just used the flow type Gundam markers and just cleaned up any of the little dots, but that is what I did before I actually panel lined it. Just in case you're curious as to what it looked like, it looks like this. This definitely, definitely does need some panel lining in order to bring out the detail that is there, but anything you would see in modern kits, like little grey parts coming through from underneath, they hadn't developed that technology yet, so it is extremely, extremely simple. Does also mean that you do get a whole ton of those things that aren't great about model kits. Seam lines down every part, like these shoulders, seam lines. Legs all the way up, seam lines, seam lines, seam lines, everything is seam lines. If you're going to be painting this kit up, that's a lot of seam lines to close up. Now that is because of the way this builds up. Everything on this for the most part is just two parts. They sandwich together and the seam line is down the middle. It doesn't matter where the armor is meant to actually be on the mobile suit in question, what is meant to be actual different armor panels, etc. Does not matter here. It's just everything's just molded onto two pieces, slapped together like a sandwich. Very, very retro, but that is the way it was back then. I guess we can at least be happy for the detail and the color that we have. Now in here we do actually get some sticker style decals, which is pretty cool. So you can attach these onto various places and why not use them? Let's give them a go. So when it comes to the decals we have in here, these are the sticker style decals, as in you just peel them off and stick them on. The only one that's actually from the unit itself, well you have a choice of two, is the one up here in the... Okay, I'm going to mention that because it just happened. These little bits 
are driving me around the bend. So we've got little weapons attached onto the side skirts. Now these actually attach into that seed style slot on the side, just like so. These actually lock the torso from moving in any kind of way. Now, I will mention that torso right there. That is one of those solid torsos from way back in the day. It has no articulation, no ab crunch, no nothing, no detail inside of it. It's just hollow. Now, that section on the side there with the pipes, that locks it from even rotating. But the worst thing is, this part here is made of a rubber. These are made of plastic, these little sections, so they do not get along. So anything that can go wrong with a high grade, both, well, aesthetically and otherwise does go wrong. We've got hollow parts, seam lines, mold lines, nubs, bad molding, no stickers for cameras, no nothing. But yeah, we do have two of these decals. So first off, you can use this one right here, or you can use this one right here. Now these are the type that you can actually see the edge from some angles like what you're seeing right there, but it's not so bad. And we have a bunch for attaching onto the Dragoons. That's super simple, you just attach them on, they're all numbered, so you've got your DR000X1 through DR000X4. You just stick them on and that is what it looks like when they are stuck on. I'm counting this right now as an accessory and I guess it, it is time to take a look at the accessories. So now jumping into the accessories and here's everything that comes inside of the box. We've got that big ring with the four dragoons attached to it, two alternate parts for the hilariously named Pristis Beam Reamers, the composite armed shield system, and the beam rifle. So when it comes to the hands in here, there are no options. We've just got the standard set of holding hands and it seems like these haven't really changed much since 2004 because they're exactly the same as what you see nowadays and they're just for holding onto the weapons. Actually, there is one aspect that is a little bit different. See that little white bit in there? I'll get back to that. As for the next piece of equipment that's actually on board the actual unit itself is these things on the sides which are the aptly named Pristis Beam Reamers because they've been reaming the metaphorical arsehole of my patience throughout the entire review so far. They don't work, they just fall apart all of the time. Hit it at all, they'll pop off. This is one of those things that'll just be on your shelf, you'll pick it up in a couple of months and they'll be absolutely gone. They also stop this thing from having any articulation in the upper body whatsoever. They're just so poorly executed. Again, older kit, so that is something that kind of does happen. In universe, these are long range beam weapons. So this is what they're like when they're stored. They can also be deployed. So we do have alternate longer pieces for using with these. So these just slot in under the back and attach in like that, then on into the side skirting. Neither, of, oh, there goes another one. Neither of these grabs on perfectly well, but in combination, it does hold them okay. You then take the parts that were removed, they attach on like so, and like so, and that is what one of the beam reamers looks like when it, <laughs> when it is deployed. Anyway, it's hollow on the underside right there, and just overall, it does what it needs to do, I guess. Next up in here is the beam rifle. So once again, this is all in one color. We do have a little bit that moves up and down on the side here and the detailing on it is pretty okay. We do have a big seam line down the top that is, you know, quite usual, but overall, it's okay. Apparently that side section right there is meant to be in yellow, but there is no sticker included. So if you want that in yellow, you will have to paint it. As for attaching the beam rifle into the hand, it's the usual sandwich style situation. You pop the hand open and then pop the beam rifle in. Now that white little section I mentioned earlier on, that is to hold it in place because the hand hole is way too big for the rifle. Even with that little white segment in there, it's still too big. So it holds onto it okay. It just kind of hangs in the hand and if, well, if it's not moving, you don't really have much of a problem. But the minute you actually start to move this at all, it's real janky side to side, up and down, shaky, shaky, shaky. I mean, this right here, this sound, this is not a premium Gunpla sound. Next up in here, we've got the shield. Now, when I was building this, I was like, well, this isn't so bad. Sure, it could be having an actual working handle down here, maybe some gray on the underside. We do have this little bit of a beam section up there, which is cool. And we do have some nice detail molded into it. But then I took a look at the instructions and realized that that little yellow section in it is meant to be, well, that little Z section in there is meant to be in yellow, which it is not. Once again, there is no sticker included in which to do this. And I also mentioned, I also noticed, I mean, that you can actually get a beam for in this too, or there should be a beam for using with this. You don't get one. It comes with the Providence Gundam, the high grade Providence Gundam, which this obviously looks like because if I'm not mistaken, it's developed into it. But yeah, no beam. Go get your own in another box. Again, not too premium. 
Also, I realized I didn't mention a lot of the color inaccuracies in the aesthetics part. Those thrusters meant to be red in there. These little bits completely in gray, apparently, is what they're meant to be. There is a, there's a whole lot. Anyway, when it comes to attaching the shield on, that slot is sideways. Need to get this little thing sideways. It's not gonna attach on like this because it's poorly designed. And you just kind of have to line everything up so it can fit. Ah, uh, there we go. So you can only actually have this attached on when it is, oh, this thing. When it is angled on ever so slightly angled like this right here. So there's no rotation in the arm at all, no rotation here. So all you have is a little bit of kind of this, uh, that, not a lot, very little. So lastly in here, we've got that big old backpack ring section with the Dragoon units. So this attaches on quite simply. You take the backpack that's already sticking out from the back there, the gray one, pop it off, pop the red ring onto that particular backpack and then just reattach it on. So it is super, super simple. I thought it was a completely different backpack, but it isn't. Once it's attached, it adds a much needed splash of color to this kit, but just like the rest of it, it's missing a whole lot of colors, predominantly white in some details, as well as some gray in some of the thruster segments. But even still, on the whole, it does look quite good. And I can only assume when this is actually detailed up, if you do plan to do that, it will look pretty damn cool. So thankfully, these can actually be removed and they pop off just like so. Actually, they hold down pretty tight because they are attached on with poly caps. Oops, it's a little bit back heavy. But yeah, this is what they look like once they are detached. Now, there's not much detail on these. They do come with some nice decals that attach on like so. You can see the boundary, of course. You can cut it a little closer if you don't wanna see those, but it does add some nice detail. They're meant to be white around the edge here. This, however, does not look great. I'm pretty sure when these are flying around the air, they don't have a little three millimeter nub sticking right out the end like so. This also makes them kind of hard to attach to anything. So if you were to attach these onto some kind of action base, like this one right here, you would need a little bit of an adapter, like so you can get cleaner ones than this one with the little edge to make sure that you can hold it on like so. But they still can work with an action base, both big and small, thankfully. So that does mean you will be able to actually make them fly around just like so. I'm sure there's different adapters you can get for the various different kind of like jet flame effect parts you can get out there to attach it onto this to make it look a little bit better. And speaking of action base adapters, there is no hole or any kind of attachment point on this for using with a stand. Guess that's just the way kits were back then. If I remember correctly, that was a kind of cradle thing. I'm gonna go see if I can find one. Nope, can't find them at all. I used to have them in a big drawer with all the kind of runner adapters still left on the, uh, or should I say base adapter still left on the runners, but I can't find them anywhere. So I'm just gonna borrow this here grabby arm that I got from a metal build kit to try and hold it up. This kind of just shows what a kind of pain in the arse these older high grades were without any way to hold them up. Maybe that'll work. Something like that just to keep it in a flying pose, maybe. Man, Gunpla definitely was a much grimmer affair back in the 2000s. Anyway, there we go. There's a bit of a pose that will have to do. There's not a whole lot of articulation and there's not a whole lot of base options in here. But anyway, that is what we get. And as you can see, it doesn't pose that well. And let's move on to the posing in articulation. Finally now onto the articulation and thankfully to say, for the most part, this is rock solid. At least it is so far. It's a very simple kit and that's probably the reason why. The only thing that's been giving me issues are these things right here, which kind of selectively fall off every now and then, but for the most part, just like to fall off a lot. This is extremely, extremely basic. So let's throw it into the pose and see what we get. So I shit you not, that is it. That is all I can pull off. This is a very simple kit with a lot of simple joints. For every one joint this kit has, I would say a modern kit has three to four. There's really not much going on. As you can see, the shoulders rotate when you bring the arms up. There's nothing in the hips or feet or knees. The elbows are 90 degrees and it just do, well, it doesn't do much at all. But yeah, like I was mentioning, when it comes to the joints, these are so, so simple. For example, in the shoulders, we're looking at pegs that are still the same color as the actual plastic of the chest, because it is part of the chest. And when you go down to the legs, it is just simple ball joint into little socket, just like so. There isn't much. That's the knee, not a lot. Ankle is just down and up. This is really, really, really old school. So as you'd expect from a decently old kit, you're not gonna be getting much in the lines of poses out of it. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And what can I say? I just wanted a cool looking Gundam, honestly. I saw this and thought it looked so, so cool. I love 
Gundam Estray designs. They're always over the top. And I remember playing as this a little bit in Gundam Cross Rays. Now, when it comes to the actual kit, aesthetically, it's missing so many colors. It's got a lot of seam lines, mold lines, and all that stuff that would have been on kits back in 2004. The color accuracy is very not great, but overall, it still looks okay. If you want a kit to actually detail up yourself, it could look ridiculously cool. It's got what it needs where it needs it at the basic level. The accessories in here are okay. Those reamers are absolutely terrible. The backpack works out a little better than I thought it would and it would have been nice if it had some kind of stand compatibility, but I suppose you could drill a hole in the bottom of it if you really needed to. Lastly then, when it comes to the articulation, it's a definite no-go. You're not getting poses out of this, and any pose you try to put it in looks bad. It's just really for standing there on your shelf with some extra details to look kind of cool. That is it. I feel kind of bad ranking an older kit because it always ends up the same pretty much, but yeah, bronze tier, sadly, and not as cool as I hoped that it would be. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and all of these awesome people right here who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Ten Soldier YT, Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Golel Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, or G95061, Ten Soldier YT again, and Van Fawn.